Hey toy family, welcome to the Marsham Toy Hour where we discuss anything and everything designer toys and a little heads up for you parents out there, if you have little ones, there is some cussing on this episode so maybe listen to this without them or earmuffs. Um, otherwise, my name is Gary Ham, and joining me is the woman who always says she's going to have words and in fact makes them up like Guy Hugic. Welcome Teresa Hawkins. Hello. <laughs> And also joining us is the man that doesn't know the power of prep, nor does he know the names of anything we talk about, George Gaspar. That's all of that is true. I can't deny it. Wait, but George, we got to get back. I mean, we got to get back at Gary and give him a mean intro. Gary. Gary Ham, the man who tries to speak and can't. Oh, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got? <laughs> Can I take it back? I feel so mean. <laughs> I like mean, Teresa. Well, I, I ended last episode. I was like, I brought a little bit of spice. Can I actually keep it up? Can I be spicy when we talk about some of the topics we're going to talk about today? I think you're going to have plenty of opportunities to be mean today. Let's see how this goes. There was actually a big weekend of conventions. George. You kicked it off on Friday with GCon. How did that go? Uh, it was perfect, actually. It was a it was a great uh, it was a great platform. Um, it was run through a thing called Crowdcast, and if anyone's looking to do like an online convention, I recommend looking up Crowdcast and going through that because it was it went flawlessly. Um, there's the guy Jeremy Gerard who's uh, who kind of put it all together for the Horsemen. He's like their web guy and. He figured out the crowdcast thing, and it was it was great all day. We were you know people were jumping on and off, and videos come up, and you all get together and talk, and then the next group comes up, and he switches off those people, brings new people on, and it was we had a great time. We did all the reveals. If anyone wants to see any of the stuff we revealed for the horsemen, um, you can just go over to um, I think it's just four horsemen at four horsemen or four horsemen studios on Instagram. I'll look it up and get say it again at the end of the podcast. <laughs> Man, you're just backing up my intro, George. <laughs> I don't know. I don't need to know things. Like, look it up yourself. Don't be lazy. Um, I'm just enjoying all of the, all of the, the baby noises. <laughs> yeah, there's a baby here joining us today, too. I don't know if you heard him sneeze before Teresa's talk, but that was it. <laughs> well, welcome to the Marsham Toy Hour, where you can just look things up yourselves. <laughs> well, We're you not know- here to hold your hand. We're here to give our opinion. <laughs> This is our opinion show. This isn't. A, I'm not a fucking journalist. <laughs> I'm just here to tell you my opinion. But people think we're journalists. That's the well, thing. Well, I'm telling you right now, I'm not a journalist. I didn't go to journalism school. This is <laughs> this is an opinion show strictly. You want to hear my opinion? Stick around. If you don't, fuck off. <laughs> Whoa! You're oh. bringing spicy spice. I gotta bring the R rating to this episode. <laughs> the guy that was four blocked me on Instagram, so he won't hear it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh firing. Uh, <laughs> Again, these are strictly my opinions, everyone. It does not reflect Gary or Teresa. So, yeah, you <laughs> sent me a link to join, and I you know, I just happened to be in a lot of meetings on Friday, and I just didn't get the opportunity. To, but I've never heard of that Crowdcast. Is that something anyone can join, or is it a paid sort of thing? Uh, yeah, I think it's just one of those sites. It's, it's kind of like a I, – I, I, it mostly resembles like um, – Zoom, if you had, like, because of the way the boxes come on the screen, I guess, but, like, it's it's more than that. It's, like, a whole thing where you can you can have different things running at the same time. Hey, I'm trying to talk over here. <laughs> How rude. Listen, mister, if you're going to be on this podcast, you got to wait your turn. <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> nice being on. <laughs> Come back in a minute. I'll have you talk. Come back in a second. Babies are so uncooperative. They just don't know how to wait their turn to talk. It's very rude. Seriously. What are you doing? So we had so let me go back to it for a sec, because it's actually really a, a nice system. Um it's it mostly resembles Zoom the way that the four boxes come on, but on the so on the right hand side though is a chat. So everybody who's there can be chatting live they can be asking questions it's kind of like doing like a live youtube i guess okay um, but you can have as many i think it was up to five or six windows of like videos playing 
or maybe it was five. And like he would normally have four of us. There'd be like two moder a moderator or two, and then a guest or two. So there'd be like four of us at a time. And then if he needed to show a clip, there was room to bring a clip up and and run a, like a video clip and stuff like that. It was a great system. Like when we, you know, and G, the GCon one that I'm talking about now was it was free. There was just you just have to register on the site and get in. It's just like you sign up and you're in. Um, the next day we did Legions Con, and I wasn't involved in that one other than being like a viewer. You know, I, I wasn't you know I wasn't there to do anything. Um, but that was like. It's kind of it's for the fans of Mythic Legions, which is the Four Horsemen's toy line. Yep. And it's started last year as a really small convention, and this year they carried it over to to you know this online system, and it was great. Like they had, I think, I don't know, almost 350, 400 people came and paid the six bucks to like see panels. And in the beginning, remember I told you there was going to be like vendors selling stuff. Mm -hmm. So I checked that part out because I was interested to see what that would be like and how would you find them and that kind of thing. Granted, it's much smaller than Nikon. There was only less than 10 vendors, I think, maybe 10. But there was just a little button on the left-hand side of the screen where you click on that. It's a drop-down menu, and you can just scroll through and see who you want to see. All mm -hmm. the names of the store was there, like the name of the vendors right there. And you just click on their name, and it brings up their live feed. Simple. Yeah, very easy to find. Very like there was it was their name and a, and a brief description of what they had, and then you just click on that, brings up their live feed, and then they do whatever they want to do. They're, you're not buying on that site. Like if you wanted to support one of the vendors, they would normally have like a little sign with like their website on it or something sitting there, so you can just go click go to their website, buy whatever you want. You're watching them live on one window. You're on their website on another window. Super easy. Super simple. You can bounce back and forth to different rooms. Everybody had their own chat. So, like, whichever one you're in, you can chat with that person, like, ask questions and chat with. Super easy. Really nice system. Wow. So, and, and I think the Crowdcast, like, platform itself, I think you just pay for it. I think you just go and, like, if, you're a, if you want to host, host a convention, you, like, you pay whatever per month or whatever it is. You know, it's something like that. And I don't know what the price is, but that was why they charged the $6 entrance fee. Okay, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was cool, and it, that that leads us into that was my Friday and Saturday, and then also on Friday though was Decon. <laughs> if we want to talk a little bit about that, we probably should. But before we do that, let's preface it by saying we are an opinion show. Like I know we've been doing this podcast for the past five years and every time we do a designer con wrap-up show people say we come across negative sounds like we hate designer con that is absolutely not the case we love designer con we love having a designer con we appreciate ben and his devoted team for hosting this event for the past 15 years and this year was by far probably their most challenging year to date it was a socially distanced event held virtually over an app called pop shop live and it had its hiccups. There were some glitches. There was a lot of complaining on social media about it. But I'm glad they still found a way to host the event. It makes a lot of vendors happy. A lot of the collectors are happy. Some not so happy. We can talk about that later as well. But I personally did not participate in the event very much. I did not pay for a ticket. Uh, but something did happen on Friday night where I get, did get to peek in and see a little bit of what was going on. However, George and Teresa, I believe you both experienced it a lot more than I did. So why don't you talk to it some? George, you're doing G-Con, right? Uh, my G-Con was all East Coast time. So it started for me at eight in the morning and ended at like one. Oh, geez. Because <laughs> it's all, it was all East Coast time. So it was super like, super different for me this time. I had to get up early and everything, but, uh, well, see, that's the funny thing is Decon is PST, so everything for me was shifted late. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, before the event even took place, I heard that the Pop Shop Live app went through a major update either Wednesday or Thursday before Friday took place. And I heard that really screwed up the interface. A lot changed from what vendors were familiar with. And so that seems risky. Like anytime any system does an update, you risk potential glitches and things it just seemed weird to do an update right before such a large event that so many were looking forward to and people were already kind of familiar with how the app worked before and then add on top of that this was i th i believe it was pop shop's first time ever hosting a large event like this yeah i mean the app 
brand new. The app came out this year, Gary. So the whole concept of it is is new, and the the idea of hosting an event is brand new as well. Yeah, I, I don't mean, think they've ever had this many sellers going at one time. Right. Okay. Uh, here, here. Okay, so let me give my. I'll give a little elevator speech recap because I did participate. So I got a ticket um, with VIP access, and I think honestly, like I knew going into it to not have like super high expectations, and also there wasn't a whole lot that I was personally. Um, like seeking like a lot of the vendors I would typically buy from weren't participating so for me it was really just uh, let's see what it is let's explore and just check it out and just see how it goes so I think in a way I was lucky in that there wasn't anything that I was like oh my god there's all these releases I'm going to be so sad if I miss out I didn't really have that going into this event which I think helped me a bit as far as when I dealt with frustrations I was like all right well whatever (laughs) but Unfortunately, a lot of the issues came down to the app itself and just the way things were organized. And I feel like it was definitely things that were funky when I went and entered for VIP night day one. Um, For instances. Oh, my gosh. So the app interface did change. Luckily, I'm one of the lucky few, I would say. I don't think everyone had experience with Pop Shop prior to this event. So I, I intentionally was kind of getting in and kind of learning Pop Shop because I was like, this is a, an interface that if you're going to really want to go in and enjoy Decon and explore, you're going to kind of need to understand what you're working with. And from experiencing Pop Shop prior to Decon, I was already familiar with the, the different weirdnesses of the app and the fact that it's really not the best built app. I think there's a lot of things that could be done to improve the app itself. There's all these different areas and searches and places to find stuff and they never really work right and they never really show the same things it's very very weird so like hearing you talk about crowdcast george and like that seems so much better. like there should just be one list one search one area but pop shop isn't set up that way there's people that are currently live and then there's things that you can shop for live and then there's a lineup and then there's shows and then there's it's like all these sections and areas and it's very, very hard to navigate. And there's a search on the main page, a search on the decon page. It's like, Jesus Christ, just how do I find this stuff? <laughs> so you kind of go into it knowing the app's a bit funky in and of itself. But the big things that happened VIP night, some of it was expected. I experienced a lot of lag, app crashing, a lot of loading issues. I go to a page and I'm just watching it like, attempt to load content but it's basically blank um unfortunately like the way the app was set up some sellers weren't showing up so one of the shows that did have some things that i thought i'd check out was my plastic cart they had some pucky and po items they were releasing on vip night and luckily for me they weren't doing it right at the start but it took me over an hour to find them and it's because the app interface was messed up and it wasn't working properly and they weren't showing up as live so they had pre-scheduled all these shows but all the pre-scheduled shows weren't actually activating the live when they got on so it kept saying stuff it kept just showing the pre-scheduled show as if they weren't on or it would say show over when you went into it which didn't make sense so i think a few different vendors got screwed a bit by the interface and just how it was being buggy but I think the biggest issue, and I know you got to experience part of this, Gary, because you went in there just to check it out and confirm. But the biggest issue we found out about on, on the initial launch night was, for whatever reason, the way they set up the app, the app anyone could download and anyone can access. And everything that was supposed to be only visible to those who had bought a ticket and were in Decon World was actually visible to everyone. And that was a Big, big issue. Big mistake. Huge. Because how much was that pass that the people paid for that privilege to shop privately on a Friday night? 65 bucks. 65 bucks. And then here I am, Joe Schmo, having not paid for a ticket, I was able to open up the app and see everything everybody else was apparently. And it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to open up the app and there would be an area for just designer con attendees to click into and you would type in your code and you get this own, only special private viewing area. But that wasn't the case. It seemed like when I opened it up, 
all the live feeds for the shops were right there and you can just scroll and enter and leave as you wanted to. But my experience was not great. Um, I don't know if it was just due because I wasn't a paid person, but it probably crashed on me four or five times, constant freeze ups. It was um, very glitchy and, and not great. But another thing that was weird, I did go into a couple of the shops, but there was no branding for designer con. Like I didn't know which shops were actually participating in the designer con. Like it just seemed like it was anybody and everybody just doing pop shot, not, not necessarily decon. Yeah, and I think that right there, that, that was what was, so, what was so funny to me is <laughs> Whoop Bear Belly actually had their very first pop shop live on Friday. That was when I was in, and I was like, yeah, yeah. it was happening right before the show. And because I know Whoop Bear Belly, right, and I like I'm familiar with the scene, and I understood kind of the background. I knew that they were just doing a regular old pop shop live, and I even was in there watching, and I joked in the comments, I was like, this is like pre gaming for Decon. But the thing that was so weird is that when Decon started, Whoop Bear's feed was showing up intermixed with all the Decon stuff on the main page and within the Decon section. So Whoop Bear was essentially a part of Decon without even meaning to be. And there were so many people in there hopping in there and asking about Decon. And they kept saying, <laughs> um, we're not Decon. So it was just, I, I honestly, like, it's kind of one of those things like live and learn. This is a brand new app, a brand new thing. I think there's a lot of things they can do to improve. But one of the biggies, I think, is if they're going to use one app, one singular app that's for a regular pop shop and decon, they just need to do a heck of a lot better of job of dividing those areas up and also just changing the way you access the decon section. I was very surprised there wasn't wasn't any specific login or password or code or just something right that would be sort of that barrier to say hey this is a paid event you need x to access it yeah now george i I, I have a question a pop shop question for Teresa before we go on um what was the you know how you always see like if you see someone advertising they're going to go on pop shop on instagram or something they're always like like scott will post like hey find me on pop shop this this weekend use code stoli or you know use code you know whatever like what what is that code what is that Uh, it's dumb so (laughs) yeah this whole code thing and that's the other thing that was so confusing so many people were like what's the code for why do i need it where do i enter and so when pop shop first started when people were trying to become sellers i think that pop shop had put in a system that said we need you to get a minimum number of people to come into the app and find you by your code. And then we know that there's people who are interested in watching you. And I think it was something like 30 people or something needed to come and enter the code. So it started off as this sort of way to get you almost verified as a seller on Pop Shop. But really, since then, it evolved. And, um, you know, at the very, very beginning, along with getting access, it it also would maybe apply some free shipping for your very first pop shop, like the first 10 people who buy. But really, ultimately, like where pop shop is now, I see no uses for the codes. Like there's no reason or no need for those codes anymore. Was there even Uh, a place to put in a code? Like, I don't even know where you put in a code. You're supposed to be able to use it to search. So... That, again, this app and the, the, the structure of this app needs a lot of work. As a UX designer, like as my real job being on making things user-friendly with design, it really, really, really bugs me. There's so many things I need to fix. But what you're supposed to be able to do is when you go to search, if you cannot find, like if you don't know the username they're under, you're supposed to be able to search that code to find them as well. So if you go See, in, now, the I, app, I tried that. That's what I thought the code was going to be for, and I tried it, and I couldn't find anybody. Because same, the app, I did the same. The app is freaking broken. And this is what I said. There's if you try to use the search on the main page, the search on the main page was acting different than the search under decon, and ultimately codes weren't working. I mean, I had in my head, I started searching. At one point, I was looking for Jeremiah Kettner, and I was searching small and round. Well, his name on Pop Shop was Jeremiah Kettner's Pop Shop, and you had to specifically know that name to find it. And I didn't. I was just searching what I know, and I couldn't find him. It, it was... The the thing that I think was so frustrating is the interface and the fact that there wasn't just an easy place to go and just see a list. 
Like, who the heck is on? Who is live? Click in and go. Yeah, my you, my, yeah, yeah. Let's hear yours. Just well, the, my main pet peeve of the of the app itself is the um, like when you when you have a when you go into someone's store. If you don't see them put up the thing live and you don't know what it is they're holding up, you go to you know you go to the store and there's all those little pictures and they're so tiny on your phone yeah. that you're like, all right, I don't know what that is. Let me click on that and look at it. And you click on it and then it's the picture, but like usually cut in half or like the top is cut off and you're like, well, what am I even looking at? What is this thing you're trying to sell me? And there'll be a big white empty area at the bottom of the screen and then half a picture at the top. I I didn't even think about mentioning that, but you're right, George. That is also a pain in the butt, just the way that the catalog is set up and the fact that you can't have multiple pictures. And yes, I don't know why they crop the picture when you click into the item. It's, it's the worst. Like I, there was like figures. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go see what this figure looks like. Maybe I want to buy it. I can't. The head's gone. I can't see. It's like a middle. It's like I'm looking at the pelvis of something. <laughs> like all right, well, I don't want that anymore. It's it's yeah. I mean. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think the app itself just needs work and, and love. The other thing, too, talking about images, George, the the thing that also I find very frustrating is when you go to look up a feed, they don't display the username anywhere. So all you get is a picture, whatever still they chose to upload, which a lot of times wasn't too helpful. The name of the show, which, again, a lot of people would just name like, Decon day one and then you get a teeny little profile picture top left to give you an indication of who the heck that stream is for but yeah, nowhere you have no like a lot of time it would be like decon live 2020 and you're like oh cool it's the decon room and you go in and it's just somebody selling pins you're like wait a minute who is, like what is this what am i looking like how am i supposed to find anybody there was no label whatsoever of who it was. All you had to go off of was a teeny little circular profile picture top left. And so many times I was like, who is this? Which one is this? And all everywhere it's like, decon, 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 decon. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, I think I realized virtual decon is not for me. Um, you know, I, I think I, it definitely I, has potential. Um, I, I think it's, I think with a little bit more work on the like back end stuff that like the, the app itself and like, you got to remember the app is not Decon. They, right. Decon was just using this platform. So right. like they, they, they got just as much screwed as everybody else <laughs> in my opinion. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think, I think it definitely has potential. I think I've talked to a couple vendors over the weekend and they all had great experiences um, there were definitely people who were able to find their shops and who were able to buy the things that they were selling. So it definitely worked. It wasn't it definitely wasn't a failure from the seller's point of view. It could have been frustrating for us, yes, but you know, every every time any convention happens, someone's frustrated they didn't get to buy the thing they wanted, even if it's in person. I remember last year there was that guy calling out Decon because he couldn't get in line right or something. I don't know, like. We talk about something every year about somebody frustrated about something. So it's just another same exact situation, you know? So it's, I don't know. I, I think it definitely it was probably not the, not as successful as they would probably have wanted it. I have no idea. I haven't talked to anybody yet, but like I would imagine they, they don't like getting all the hate that they get online, but it seemed like it was a good first attempt. If you ask me, like, I don't know. It seemed Is it this definitely has room for, room to improve if they need to do it again hopefully we don't ever need to do this again but uh you know if if for some reason next year we still need to do it again i think that they could probably improve it oh yeah for sure there's tons of room to improve and and that's the thing is that i think they knew it was going to be sort of like this you know we none of us had high expectations for it but the fact that it was a paid event it should still perform to a certain level of expectancy and it sounds like it didn't quite do that for a lot of the attendees that didn't paid money, especially the the sixty dollar VIP people. So in that regards, I think maybe it shouldn't have been a paid event. Yeah. I think I, I agree with that. And I think they could have that that could have been avoided by simply selling the VIP boxes as like a VIP like box itself. Like it's just like the extra event part of decon and like those people that want to collect those bare brick and want to collect those things, like they get that VIP badge, they get their VIP experience. 
it shouldn't have been related to the pop shop at all. It should have just been like, here's the extra VIP thing that we normally do if you want to be that VIP again, you know, and then they could have just sold that. And then maybe the $10 to get in, maybe you get one shop free shipping, you know, or something like that. I don't know if they could do something like that, but some way to like, you still have to pay to be part of it if you want to be part of it. But I don't know. I don't, the ten dollar part doesn't bother me. Like, like I said, even like with the with the Legion's Con for six bucks, like I think that's completely appropriate to because there's still a lot of work that goes into this stuff. There's still a lot of fees that are involved in all of this to like run all this stuff. That doesn't bother me. The VIP one, I feel bad about. Like, I feel like they should have. If you could have just said like you're buying a VIP box of stuff, and then it had nothing to do with the app, but and then just charge ten dollars. Like, I think for ten dollars, it's worth. Even if it's glitching, like for ten bucks, it's like, yeah, you know what? It's ten bucks. Like, I'm still able to get in. I'm still able to do things. Cause like I tried that just because we got in Friday, I tried again on on Saturday and I couldn't find anybody. It was completely fixed, as far as I know. Like I like there was a couple rooms that were like popping up that were like probably decon people, but like I couldn't find any decon stuff, and I tried. Yeah, I tried on Saturday as well. So they did fix that for Saturday and Sunday. I did see a video that Ben put up on Friday night after the event, and he did acknowledge the fact that, yes, there were non-pass paying people running around on Friday night making purchases, but they did say that they were going through the list of sales and they were going to actually cancel and refund anyone who did not pay for a VIP pass and which which sounds great, but at the same time, I feel bad for especially the smaller vendors, for, you know, to then wake up on Saturday morning and find out that things have been canceled, and then they have to replenish their inventory and try to sell it the next day. So that's kind of bummer on on that regard. But at least they acknowledged it and they tried to make it right to the VIP holders. Yeah, it's kind of a nightmare on the back end for sure. I would imagine. Yeah, and I also heard saw another video that Ben was talking to the VIP pass holders. I think there was some things that maybe didn't arrive in time. They're back to the future items, and he's trying to make amends with them in other ways. I think he's mentioned they're going to be doing future pop shop live events where only the VIP pass holders will get invited to those events. Um, so it's nice that he's trying to make amends with them on certain things. But another thing I heard people complaining about was just the overall lack of customer service on the app. A lot of people were having issues and just not able to uh, get it resolved through any sort of tech support. Yeah, and that's something that sucks because it's like Decon will definitely be blamed, but it's like that's a pop shop problem that they should have had somebody there running and fixing the whole time. You know? No, it's me. There's so many things I need to say. <laughs> Go for it. So there was a pop shop support feed. It was one guy, but the problem was you needed to be able to be in the app and find him to get help from him. So there was someone there, but I think it was a bit flawed. Okay, good to know. I, you're, I'm, I'm with you all. Like, I don't know. I guess the whole paid event, non-paid event, I think I really side with you on that, Gary. Being uh, like a guinea pig year and trying it out. I personally side with the make it free, test it out, see how it goes. That way you don't have any heartburn over this cost stuff. Because I'll tell you right now, George, while I like the idea of you saying to sell the VIP box separately, I will tell you probably none, very few of those boxes will sell. Because I'm telling you right now, people buy that for the early access. People aren't buying it for the stuff. At least I know that would be the case with me. I think there are a select few who might be into the stuff in the box, but for, I think for the majority of people, the box is just kind of an extra on top of the main benefit of getting early access. One of the other things, too, that I think was really frustrating about the whole people getting access into Decon that didn't have tickets, there are a lot of people that use the Pop Shop app on the regular and may not have understood that Decon was a special paid event. And they just got on to Pop Shop. They were getting notifications, alerts, got in and were like, oh, there's new shows tonight. I'm going to check them out. So I think there were probably a lot of people who just kind of happened upon it. And pro- maybe, you know, there, there's our side of the scene that may have known it was going on and thought, well, let's just check it out and see if I can get in. But I think a lot of people that accidentally got in were just regular pop shop users that just stumbled up and just jumped in and and honestly i know we talked a lot about how if they had made this just public and free it would have just given that 
kind of natural opportunity to just let anyone and everyone participate, especially people who may not be familiar with their scene, but are regular users of Pop Shop. Can you and imagine how many more people would cry, though, that, like, I want a refund. I didn't buy the thing I wanted because someone else bought it first. Like, that's you don't get a refund for that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah you should never get a refund for that. But if you're paying 60 bucks for early VIP access, you should be able to get things before a non-paying person. But they, like I said, they fixed that and they said that was only 1% to 2%. I think you're right, Gary. The biggest heartburn was people who paid and either could not figure out how to get into the app, could not figure out how to get access, because I know there was definitely that, and then this whole heartburn over just feeling like they got screwed. Like, I paid 65 bucks for nothing because anyone could have gotten in anyway, which ultimately, again, it is kind of down to the app. It's down to the technology, but if you know you're using this brand new system, this brand new, I guess, just approach to things... I mean, I, I'm kind of like, I'm with you, George, $10. It's just like, it's 10 bucks, you know? But I don't know, just being able to do it as a free event, like many others did this year, I feel like would have gone over better and just avoided a lot of this heartburn and a lot of people feeling. Because I know through a lot of the, des- if you were to go look at Instagram now and designer con, I don't know how much of the comments or posts they'll keep up because some of them are getting kind of nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've seen some, yeah, they're the trolls are out in force, and it's brutal. And I I feel bad for Ben and his team because, like you said, a lot of this a lot of this goes to Pop Shop. Uh, I've seen comments saying like, "I've been conned. So and so is a snake." You know, it's just trolls being trolls. But it's I have seen though, like people level headed people that I know. Uh, they're actually using their actual name, saying some things about they didn't get access and whatnot. So it's, you have your trolls, and then you have your like other people that are having shared bad experiences as well. So the fact that you're seeing the more tactful, respectful people saying things too lets you know that there were definitely issues going on. Yeah, and well, and it sucks too because again, they didn't have to do this. You know, they could have said, you know what, designer time canceled. We're not going to do this. But they chose to take it on and try something new. So you got to give them kudos for giving this a go. You know, it's a huge change, a brand new thing. And so, you know, I love that Ben wants to keep designer con going and keep making this show happen, even if it means trying something completely new. Um, and I think you made a great point too, George. Like at the end of the day, there's always going to be heartburn especially with a show as big as Decon, whether it's issues with lines or I didn't get to buy the thing I wanted or I got on VIP and I missed out on blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's going to happen no matter what. And so some people just need to like chill. (laughs) Well, you have to remember though, that's only the vocal hater part of it. Because those, those vendors wouldn't have a good time if there weren't all those people getting in and doing it. There were plenty of people that got in had a great experience, bought from their favorite vendor and left because they wouldn't have, those vendors wouldn't have had good sales if that didn't happen. Those people just don't go online and complain. No one goes online and goes, Hey guys, I'm having such a great day. It's wonderful. Everything's cool. Remember that great time I had? Like, no, they go on the line and they bitch. That's what online's for. Yeah. I've seen, I saw a few of those really nice comments. Thank you. I had a great time talking to people, but they're buried in between 20, 20 trolls just <laughs> losing their shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like, you gotta, you gotta think that like those vendors that had good sales, they didn't sell to themselves. They sold to somebody and those people were in there buying stuff, having a good time. So you have to, you have to remember that there were good things too. There were, those people just are online. The, whatever yeah. the opposite of complaining is. I, yeah. I do though. Like, I don't want to paint, I don't want to be negative, but I also do want to say I do think the vendor experience was a bit of a mixed bag just from what I saw and and participated in, George. Like, I don't think it was necessarily like a bomb or anything like that. People were definitely buying. Things were selling. But I do feel like it was similar to a typical decon or even a five points or any show in general where it was definitely varied. Right. There were those streams that was like, holy hell. I tried to go into Metacom. That crashed the app on me. I was like, okay, not again. Because I was just curious. Um, Martian Toys was another one where I jumped in. And when the feed started, literally the first thing you see. So if you're familiar with 
pop shop when someone purchases it pops up that someone purchases and it fills the screen with lightning bolts it's like a little celebration well on certain feeds where there was like people were wanting to get in and like buy if you entered it and it didn't crash literally all you're watching is just like your screen going nuts with purchases it was like bubble lightning bolts over and over and over and over and over it was crazy i recorded it at one point i'll have to show it to you all yeah but, maybe uh, for this maybe for an event like this they need to turn that kind of feature off to yes. save a little bit of the uh lag that it causes yeah that that's actually a really good point i think in gen there's so many things with the app i feel like they could just rethink but that so there were definitely feeds like that where i try to go in just to kind of see like i didn't have necessarily like a i went into martian toys because they had um his symbiosis piece uh there was a new martian toys exclusive it's a yeti colorway so it's like a snow version uh white body blue hands and feet with new critters and all that kind of stuff and so i was like i'm gonna try to pop into martian toys to buy the yeti and uh, I got in. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to come back because everyone was in there to buy quick text stuff. And it was just going crazy. But then there were other feeds I'd go in that were the complete opposite. Very chill, you know, very calm. It seemed like, you know, they were selling things here or there. But it was very much similar to, I think, a regular decon in the sense that there's going to be some booths that people go straight for. And there's a crazy line and people just buy it all out within the first five minutes and then there's booths that are a little more chill right and so i think the people that were more successful are those that had schedules and plans and things to do like at one point i hopped into andrew bell's feed and he was doing different things throughout the day so he was doing uh, live sketches and then posting the sketches up for sale uh and then um he was doing customs of his vinyl so his kisses of death he was actually doing some really cool, um, like, antiqued bone finishes on them. And he was doing them live so people could watch his process. He was talking about what he does and how he does it, answering questions. And then once he finished it, he'd actually list it and people could buy it. And and then you go over to, like, uh, you know, I think some of the storefronts did really well because they just had so much to show. Like, some people, right, they may have made 20, 30 things, right? And it's just their subset of stuff. Um, so doing something like a live drawing or live painting or something just to have something interactive going on was really helpful. But I think the ones that were most successful were the stores like My Plastic Heart or Strange Cat Toys, where they had just tons of stuff they could list. They could sit and list their exclusives. They could do drops at certain times. They could fill it in with stuff around the store. They could do archives, stuff they've had in the back for, you know, 10 years. They could do blind box openings they just always had something new so i i go out explore and then just bounce back to my plastic card to strange cat like well what are they doing now and so it's just to me it's just people really like if this is something that's going to continue i just think to be successful at it you've got to really think about how you do your drops and how you do your scheduling so that there's when you're live it's not just you staring at a screen yeah those worst ones were those people that weren't doing much or that were like wasn't a crowded room and then all of a sudden you walk in and it announces your name and then you're they're like oh hey so and you're like oh no i don't want to make eye contact this is like <laughs> I'm like trying to keep my head down and not not walk through artist alley and look at anybody yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes i need a ninja mode option i need to be incognito like give me the option to let you know if i want you to know i'm entering or not that'd be awesome yep <laughs> <laughs> and it's the one thing I do like, though, even though your name shows up when you join, it doesn't say when you leave. So I would pop in and maybe like sit for a sec and I just peace out. And I'm like, they won't know that I left. <laughs> really? That's good. I, I feel less guilty now knowing that. Well, then, Teresa, you must have you were it seems by all your people you're mentioning, you were able to find a lot of people. Like, I guess, like I said, I didn't have a ticket, so I wasn't uh, I wasn't legitimately there. I was just trying to search like what I could search, you know from the out, from an outsider point of view. Um, so I, I couldn't find anybody. I didn't see any of those names. I didn't like, even on that Friday when people said you could get in, I, I wasn't able to find mostly everybody. So maybe like, maybe there was a glitch and some people showed up, but I wasn't able to find pretty much anybody even on that free Friday. Freaky. Speaking of freaky Friday, like that was 
uh, Friday the 13th. So maybe that's why the glitch happened. But Teresa, it sounds like you had a great time and were able to find everybody. Like your previous pop shop experience in Tech Savvy paid off. Well, and she had a, and she had a ticket. So that like having the ticket helped. For us, not having the ticket and just yeah. trying to do it. That was that was our downfall, Gary. <laughs> but also, we, Gary, we we suck, George. Well, but Gary, I mean, ultimately, I not not only did I have benefit of experience of the app, but I'm pretty savvy and I was determined. And so I won't I won't tell you. I fought the app. There was a point where I was like, I know my plastic heart is live. I'm gonna freaking find them. Like they were one of the ones that definitely got screwed over by the app interface. There were a lot of people that really struggled to find them. And I know they weren't alone. There were vendors that were being hidden. And I'll tell you to, to find it. Good God, it was buried. It was a treasure hunt. And I ended up somehow deep under a seller's area. And then finally I found this link that said live. And I was like, Jesus Christ, there they are. So it, it was definitely not without issue. And I did not see hundreds. So I know that there was this huge list. I definitely saw, I would say, like 20, maybe 30 live at a time. So I probably missed people, too. Um, okay, let's hear what you bought. Like, what were you successful at picking up? So ultimately, I ended up buying, um, I got the Yeti Symbiosis, and then I got a few things from my plastic cart. But beyond that, I was mostly just a spectator. There were a few times I tried, and I just wasn't fast enough. That's the other thing. I don't. I don't know how many people were prepared, but Pop Shop is definitely a speedy shopping experience. And I'm sure there were people that went into the crazy booths that weren't familiar with Pop Shop and thought, okay, I'm just going to pop in and I'll be able to buy, no problem. And they didn't realize is that you, like, literally to buy off Pop Shop, you have, to, I literally will have my fingers at the ready. I have the catalog open, one finger over the product, one finger over where I know the buy button's going to show up. And I'm literally ready to click very fast three times. Product buy confirm. Like that's boom, crazy. Boom, boom. You have to go that fast. Yes. And so, it, it, depending upon what it is, especially if it's one of ones, like a unopened blind box or just a single item, you really have to be very, very quick. Um, I know this is the way. This is what everyone's gravitating to. It's it's great that this app exists during this pandemic where. You know, artists are now able to go on and kind of make up some of that income they've lost. Like, it's fantastic, but I can say, like, this is not for Grandpa Ham. I am not oh, going to be purchasing things through this app. It's not for non-Grandma Teresa <laughs> Hawkins either. I mean, it's ultimately at the end of the day, what I'll say is, is there a place for Pop Shop? Yes. Ultimately, for me, Decon really just felt like uh, another day of watching Pop Shops. Honestly, it was really some were some were interesting, some weren't. Uh, the only thing was that there was just more shows going on at once and uh, some different exclusives being dropped. But dropped. But ultimately, like me watching my plastic cart through Decon was just like watching them on Pop Shop any other day. Right. But at the end of the day, like I, I want live. Like I want Decon to go back to what it always is. Because at the end of the day, I want to see people in real life. Like there's nothing. You're, you're never going to experience decon through an app like you do at decon in person. Of course. And there's nothing, you know, designer con can do about it. They're, they're trying their best for the situation. But I'm curious, if you had to rate designer con online on Yelp, how many stars are you giving it? I don't how many? Five? Five. <sighs> Two or three? Oof. George, are you responding to Teresa or are you responding to a diaper? What? You you said oof. So I didn't know oh, no, if you were responding, responding to her to rating. Two, or... I was responding to two or three. Okay. I thought then in the background I heard Jess say something, so I thought maybe she had showed you like a nasty oh. diaper. Oh no, he is getting a diaper change, but it's in the other room I am not watching. Oh nice. You know what? Before one one thing to mention is it, I saw a couple of vendors actually selling online is outside of the designer con event which i thought was kind of nice because Teresa mentions how hard it is to purchase things on pop-up shop pop shop live sometimes and it's nice that they were able to do that to some of the non-attendees as well because that's what happens at a real designer con the vendors have stuff at their table but for the people that aren't able to go they put up some of their stock on their online store so it's nice that some of the vendors do that and i know martian toys is one they had that Teresa. they had that uh symbiosis that you were talking about they had that within virtual decon and then outside of it too 
Yep, it's on uh, MartianToys.com right now. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I think that's nice. That's a nice offer to be able to get it outside of Pop Shop Live. Like, I feel like a heel that I didn't pay. And I'm sure Ben doesn't need my 10 bucks, But, you know, being a podcaster and reviewing <laughs> it, like, I feel bad that I didn't participate in the virtual event. But at the same time, like, I kind of already done several Pop Shops and I kind of knew what to expect. And I knew the devotion and how quick-fingered you need to be. And I just... Being in the weekend with the family and the kids, I just didn't see myself devoting to it. It's not like a real decon where I'm out of town, I don't have the family with me, and I could just be all in on designer con, you know? It just, I knew it was going to be different. I will say it's very funny you mentioned, like, usually these events, right? There's something to them, right, about being able to fully engross yourself and be out of town, right, and just fully into this event. Do you know how funny it is for me to be like, I'm at decon right now and I'm sitting in bed eating cereal with my dog Bailey. (laughs) And then on Saturday morning, I was like waiting for some shows and I was installing a towel rod in my bathroom with Pop Shop up. And I was like, this is... Dude, exactly. You were attending, during a pandemic, you're attending Designer Con through an app on your phone while you're in the bathroom hanging a shower curtain rod. Like, what are we complaining about? The fact that... We're so lucky to have the, this technology during this pandemic. The fact that companies and retailers are now able to ad- use this technology to adjust to a more, you know, direct to consumer thing, and, you know, and help them get back to pre-pandemic times. Because I know the winter has not been easy on people here in Washington. Just this weekend, we've learned that come Monday we're going back to a, a reduced lockdown. I think Chicago is the same thing, where retailers are only going to get twenty-five percent foot traffic. It's you know the winter is going to be bad for us. This thing is lasting way too long, and because of technologies like this to allow vendors to experience a designer con that's amazing this is a positive well yeah i mean and now after you know because they're all sellers via decon now now they're all sellers on pop shops so now they can do a show whenever right like yeah yeah. exactly and not just the vendors like i think a lot of the attendees downloaded pop shop for the first time because of designer con and hopefully they had a good enough experience and yeah it was flawed but hopefully they can see what pop shop has to offer and We'll give it a chance later this week or next weekend where the other stores are hosting their, their regular events. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, was it perfect? No, but kudos to them for giving it a go, you know? At the end yeah. of the day, it gave us some kind of form of decon. And and it opened up all these sellers now have a, have a venue. Yeah. yeah. And it also brought out a lot of trolls came out from underneath the bridge. My God. Have, <laughs> have, have we ever talked about trolls and trolling on the podcast before i don't uh i mean we mention trolls all the time and we troll don't we i don't oh are, God, we don't do we troll? I, troll I hope i'm not a i troll. don't consider ourselves trolls oh i think people think we're trolls all the time uh, i i hope not i we're just three people that jump on a call and try to talk like like we would normally out there at designer con. Like the fact that people only hear the negative things we say and they're completely deaf to the all the good things we've actually said about things, that's unfortunate. But we're not like an endorsement podcast where we're gonna come on here and only talk praise on the things that we talk about. We're not the if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all podcast. Like that's not us. Like that's not what we do. We're just three people trying to have the most unbiased, open and honest discussion we can like we're not uh, I, I people that say like oh you only talk nice about your sponsors and you're I, negative about everything else like that's not true we just talked 45 minutes about the flaws and disappointments of designer con this year and we talked about that in the past and designer con is a, a you know an offspring of 3d retro like come on now we're not trolls like, don't block us because of the things we've said. Like, don't <laughs> get upset because you disagreed with the things we said. Like, you're not always going to hear everything that you want to hear. That's just not how it works. We're, yes, we do talk about certain toys a lot. We do talk about some of our friends a lot. But that just also happens to be what we collect. I mean, come on. Well, yeah. I mean, how are you going to talk about the things you don't know anything about? You talk yeah. about the stuff you know and the stuff you're looking at online. We don't like... People used to say that on, on Toy Break. They'd be like, you guys like all the toys you, you have on. It's like, well, yeah, because we went and bought them. I'm not going to buy a bunch of toys I don't like to come and talk about them. If you want to send me toys that I don't like, I'll talk about those. But if I'm buying it, chances are I probably like it. 
Yeah. I, th- I think there's a difference between keeping it real and being honest and being a troll. Like, by all means, I hope people don't see me as a bully when I just share my honest opinion of what Decon was like for me. Like, would I I'd love to be able to come on and be like, fuck yeah, it was the best weekend ever. Yes. But was it? Not exactly. You know, could I have... Could I have gone this weekend without having participated in it and been okay? Probably. But I'm glad I gave it a shot. I'm glad I checked it out. There were still some fun things that happened here and there. But it wasn't the best experience. To be so, fair, it wouldn't be a Marsh M Decon recap if we didn't have a whole <laughs> hour of vision at that Decon. <laughs> but I mean, it's just ultimately, like, I want to keep it real. I don't want to come on here and, you know, make it sound like it's something it wasn't. So... But I still want to try to be positive, so I'm, I don't want to sit and it's become the negative Nancy show either. So, all I can say is I'm ready for in person Decon 2021. Let's do it. Hell yes, George. At 25 percent capacity. No, 100 percent capacity. <laughs> Why can't you just do it outdoors? It rains like five days a year in uh, California. Just find some open parking <laughs> swap and just set up booths. Let's do it. They've been they've been canceling even outdoor stuff sometimes here. Like I know there was like a patches and pins trying to do like outdoor events, and the, the people were still. It's all the Karens in town would, would shut them down. I, I feel I feel so bad for businesses right now. It just I'm mean, reading and hearing horror story at the horror story. It's just it's a shame. It's it's tough times, and everybody knows the the virus is not outdoors. It only goes inside. So. <laughs> and the virus the virus like it just it only comes out after 10 p.m so as long as you close your retail business by 10 p.m oh yeah i like that fine. i like that rule a lot like every all the restaurants have to close by 10 it's like because the virus will only get you after 10 you can't be at a restaurant <laughs> oh gosh it's so silly i'll just it's, keep staying in my bubble until it's safe which at this point god knows Four years from now, we'll be having the same old conversations. You know what? About- By this time next year, we're getting really close. We got a lot of great options. Like, yeah, you don't want to get it at this point because you're, you know, you might not be be able to be the ones to get the Remdesivir or the uh, the Pfizer thing that's you know that they're working on. But like, I believe by this time next year, we're going to be in a much better place. But as long as people like can just mask up for the next several months and not bitch about it, like. I like to think that we can get this thing under control and get the retailers back to back to opening because no real retailer can sustain this. Like, I think maybe they can go three, six months, but they can't go another six months without foot traffic and, and whatnot. So hopefully this can turn around. But George, is Jess around? Uh, well, she, it- she just went into the other room to feed. Oh, I miss talking to her. I always like when she jumped on. Well, Gary, can I just say, you know, I know you're talking, bless you, that was Bailey. Um, oh, bless you again. The sneeze hour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was needy. I'm actually, I, you all have made me very unproductive. I didn't, I haven't done shit. I put some tape down to paint and I didn't do anything. <laughs> ben Bailey. Um, <laughs> But no, I was just going to say, I think the other thing too, I mean, honestly, if we're talking about the impact of this on our scene, and I know we talk a lot about retailers and retail establishments, but I think something I've realized is I, I, like, I know how much I enjoy going to events, but I don't think I realized how much life they breathed into me and into artists and into our scene, just as far as giving it that sort of life and like, think about, I don't know about you all, but like when I go to a five points or a decon it just it fills me up like it's I get to see and talk to everyone I get to see things in person I get to hear you know hear what people think about Martian but I get to hear what people think about uh you know toys that are releasing it's just it's something that for me it's like fuels all these creativity and ideas and this just like energy within me of like yes fuck yeah designer toys I love it <laughs> You know what I mean, though? Like, there's just, there's something about being in those environments that can be so invigorating as a collector, as a creator. And it's just, it's, it's like, I want that back so bad. So you're not one for the the doom and gloom, are you? 
this is killing me. It's like it's like the <laughs> seasonal affective disorder all year long. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. It's hard. So I don't know. I'm just. Well, I'm it's very just ready inspiring to, to be walking around with those artists doing all their stuff and like not having that inspiration from all the other artists all year now. Right. It's everyone. You know how we always talk about like we're talking in a bubble or talking in a void. Like we are just talking, but we have no idea who's listening, what they're thinking as they listen. And when we go to these events, we always, you know, we've always talked about it, Gary, like when people come up and stop us and talk about the show, how good it feels just to hear and know people are listening and like it. And it kind of gives us that life. I know that that's something like that's just a we're just a small little piece of the puzzle. Right. Just, talk, you know, we're talking apparently talking shit all the time. Right. <laughs> we're just talking opinion. But, but for creatives. Right. Just imagine like. I have a creative side to me too. And just as an artist being able to be around and network and talk and get inspired and just to have that inspiration and to hear from fans. And there's just, you know, there's just, it's not the same when it's not in person, you know, being able to see all the stuff in person, see all that detail and texture and be like, Oh my God, that's crazy. How did you do that? Bumping into people. It's just like, ah, I that's want it. It's funny that you mentioned like how we don't hear like a lot of the feedback and whatnot. Like, but I've heard, heard from the last episode like several people thought that was like one of our best episodes of all time. <laughs> people did like it. Yeah, people just the worst we're getting. The people are really enjoy it. They like George busting my balls. They like uh, you were trying to say Momiji. <laughs> yeah, the stutter I've developed that's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Sh- shroomy, my shroomy. Oh God! I can't believe I I cannot believe we were calling it the wrong thing the whole time. I was so I was like, like no, it's shroomy, mushroomy, it's shoomy. But yeah, it just at, at the end of the day, I want us to just keep doing us, keep it real. Just I think that's too. I think what people like is that fact that we aren't we're not just gonna get on and promote and say, hey, here's these new toy releases. We actually share what we think, whether yeah, they speak- agree with it or not. Yeah, speaking of which, I posted on the on the Martian Toy Facebook group that we were that the link to the uh, box attack Funko versus Designer Toys saying that Designer Toys are boring. Like that thing blew up. So there're people in the group, but they they really respond to certain things and they they responded well to that one for sure. People love a good discussion, Gary, especially when it's controversial. Yeah, that's for sure. There were some good responses in there. So I don't think we need to like have a special episode talking about that anymore. Let's not give that any more attention. So if you're listening and that was an episode you're looking forward to, like just seriously, just follow us on uh, Marsham Toy Hour on Facebook and, and read the thread yourself. Like There's a lot of good comments in there. But um, yeah, speaking of which, you know what we forgot to do last week was we forgot to give away our $10 gift card to uh, Strange Cat Toys. So let's go ahead and do that now. Oh! I need to get my fancy generator out. Yeah. And I think this is our last uh, gift card giveaway. I didn't realize how difficult it is to do nice things. <laughs> okay, Teresa, we have 15 total entries. Do your thing. 15? Yep. I can't find it. So instead, we're using a number picker wheel. I get to Woo! spin the wheel. You all ready? Let's do it. Okay, I got numbers 1 through 15 on the wheel, and I'm going to give it a spin. Okay. It's spinning now. Spin, 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 spin. The winner is... Hope it's a low number. (laughs) Number 15. Oh, (laughs) F you. Don't yell at me. It's the spinner. (laughs) Number 15, Volley Dweller. His hey! favorite was the Urban Aztec Wolverine. Jeremy! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Congrats. Yeah, congrats, Jeremy. I will contact you with that gift card code. All right, we have Keep anything up. else to talk about? Should we end the note with something super random and absurd? Sure. My favorite thing about this scene is finding toys in my feed that should not exist, but that do, and they're so bad, it's good. And I would like to call out and give kudos to Momoko Studio. We've probably <laughs> talked about we've probably talked about them before. They've released um, those shark tooths. They do a lot of shark themed toys. 
the Raise Up Your Hand series with Toy Zero Plus. Lots of stuff going on by them. But they posted this toy that they released at TTF called Shark Horse. Oh my god, I said that wrong. Shark Horse. And it is glorious in all its being. And I love it so, so much. I sent it to you all. And I know you love it too. Because you can't not. It's the It's amazing. So it's kind of like a, a shark head on a, I thought it was a unicorn's body, but okay, we'll go with horse. And then it was painted with like a rainbow spray. Are you going to pick it up? I mean, I don't know this is one that I would ever have in my collection, but I still freaking love it. It's freaking amazing. It's. Can we just, can we just before you keep going, can we just talk about, Gary, you, you said you thought it was a unicorn body, but it could be a horse? Uh-huh. Can you tell me what the difference between a unicorn body and a horse body would be? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think the fact that there was a rainbow spray on there immediately made me think unicorn. But you're right. I guess it can go either way. Jerk. The, whole, the body of a unicorn and the body of a horse <laughs> are pretty much the same thing. It's the part that makes a unicorn a unicorn is his horn on his head. <laughs> <laughs> George is back. Come on. That was the craziest comment I've ever heard. Oh, my God. <laughs> So this be our show from now on. Gary says something and you just shit on it. <laughs> I do say a lot of stupid things. That's why a lot of people keep me around. I find they find me entertaining. I guess so. <laughs> I just want um, to. I think that thing is amazing looking. By the way, it reminds me a lot of that. Do you, Gary, you might remember. Tracy might not know it. It's an older toy, but the uh, it was a blue yeah. character. A Jermaine, I think it was Jermaine Rogers, right? Was it? Yep. I think so. Do you know the thing I'm talking about? It looks like Bobby Hill's head on like a weird yep. warty figure, like body, like weird four legged. Yeah, I know exactly I was, what you're talking about, but I cannot think of the name of the toy. And it's me, so I don't know the name of anything. Um, but I, and I, at least I got the artist right. Um, I I love that thing. That's one of my favorite toys. It's still on my shelf up in, up in the living room right now. Um, so this thing, I should get this thing and put it right next to that because it looks pretty amazing. Well, now I gotta look this up. I'm tr- Oh my god! I found it! It's like a pig, a pig with a human head. Yeah, it looks like Bobby Hill from King of the Hill. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna find out the name of it. I'm right here. I'm so close. Images. I literally googled Jermaine Rogers blue toy, and here it is. It's called The Tempter. The Squire. Squire. That's, that's it. That's it. Yep. That's great. Can this please be a new category of I don't know how many other toys are out there where they've merged like two random things together. But <laughs> this just gives me life. Can we please make this a thing? I want that to be the, Tons the year of mashups out there. <laughs> Maybe you just don't find them all as great as the horse mashups. Well, what else? Enlighten me. I'm not thinking. I can't think of any. I mean, isn't that the whole bootleg scene is all about the mashups? Maybe. Is Jess back? I want to hear her stand up on trolls. Oh yeah, she's here. Do you want to talk about trolls? Oh, what happened? You want to talk about I, trolls online? And I don't know what we're talking about. Yes, we were, we were just we're talking you? about like the, all all the trolls came out from underneath the bridge with their comments out of uh, on designer con, and then we just talked about like, how just trolls in general exist and the, how much they love the internet. Oh. oh. Those are my thoughts exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, see, I can't fake around because there's a cute little baby just laughing at me. <laughs> but Jess, do you think do you think we are trolls, George, Gary, and I, with this show? Are are we trolls? No, because you guys are. Are you guys trolls? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, because, like, some of those pages, like, yesterday, like, I was looking at them, and they're, like, 14 followers, so you know that page is specifically made to troll the, yes like, these other things, and, like, you guys are, you guys are, you guys are, I guess, more opinionated, but you're not going on and just constantly putting snake emojis and, like, doing it deliberately, like, you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna troll something for an hour on Saturday. What was that one comment where it was the, the D&D con stands for disappointed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was so funny. Come on, that's a good troll. I mean... It, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good troll. 
<laughs> That's the title it's of the like, show. I think there's like a point of like, like getting your um, like thought of, like across. Like I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, my coffee hasn't kicked in. Um, like your opinion across, like without having to be like, oh, I left 17 uh, comments. Hopefully they get it. Like no, now you're just a dick. Well, there, there's a difference between coming on the show and saying Decon sucks balls, end of story, or coming on, which I don't agree, in case people think that that's what I think. And now they're going to take that sucks balls and just use it a million <laughs> other places. So you're welcome. <laughs> but, well, watch out, Teresa. Remember that time that someone took a, a bunch of clips from Ben when he was on our show talking about Designer Con and then a bunch of a no, O's from me, O oh, O's from me, and made it into a YouTube clip. They're gonna do that with your sound bites and with all these <laughs> trolls. That had to be Spanky, right? Was that Spanky that made that? Are you serious? No, I don't know if it was. Or not. I never I heard to... who made that video, but it was funny. But I would bet the house that it was not Spanky. There's, there's no way he would do that. That's true. I just think like it sucks, like. Because some of these other people, like, they're, like, the ones that are, like, really hating, like, really, really hating yeah. on it. Um, like, they, they're not the ones out there trying to throw a convention, you know, amid a pandemic. Like, of course, this is, like, a new platform. It's a learning curve. And, like, I understand, like, what you guys were saying, because it is a learning curve. You shouldn't, like, probably Church. make people pay. But, like, get off your fucking fat ass and try to do something for the art scene like what the fuck are you doing mom yeah it's you know and we're also trying to give <laughs> we're trying to give constructive criticism we're not trying to just shit on things right at the, at, like, at the end of the day i think we say it constantly like we love the scene we want it to do good we're really just here just chatting about things but like i don't i'm not i'm not gonna go out there and just i've never been that person to sit and just comment shit for the sake of commenting shit Oh, I can't ever see you being a troll, Teresa. Like, that's impossible. But there are some trolls out there that they're so trolly, they have several accounts, and they'll actually just have conversations <laughs> amongst their troll accounts. At least that's what I've heard. Oh, that's good stuff. I think well, 3D Retro had that, like, with um, with one of their Aru's, like, and they kept, like, deleting this, like, one troll. And then finally, it, the, the person, who, like, had so many accounts and he kept, like, coming back with different ones. And at one point he was like, you can keep deleting me, but as long as you keep deleting me, I'm just going to keep creating more accounts and just trolling you guys. Wow. And so that's not why, like, I think some of those other ones, I think that they're probably the same people. Yeah. Like that, like probably two, like three of those, like really harsh ones are probably. And they probably never even tried to get into decon. Yeah. They're probably just people trying to cause problems. Like I'm down for the one person who told one of the people, like, just chill the fuck out. Like, just stop. Like, what's the point? Like, yeah, we get it. You don't like it. Then get the fuck off. Don't come back next year. That's all right. We, we're not going to miss you. <laughs> Well, and then I think like some people like were trying to like do good comments at one point, like oh let's fill the thing in with good comments, and some another one of these people was just like oh these are all their homies, these are all good comments, and it's just like, like who the fuck cares? Well, I just don't know. like like it. It's part of me wonder how many people like, commenting actually tried to participate or just watching the video and commenting on the video. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> oh, they deleted all the comments. Okay. Well, and then they started, then somebody started like, you better not delete these comments. Like, stop trying to um, cover up, cover the, up the real, yeah, like, try, mm -hmm. stop trying to make it seem like your event's going smooth. Oh, they re-commented the D for disappointment on the latest video. They're, like, re-spamming it over and over. Because <laughs> they think it's so clever. I mean, it is a little clever, but it's also mean. It's really <laughs> clever, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like man. Well, fuck trolls. But I guess you guys are, like, minor trolls. Like, journalism trolls. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not even Take that really back. Journalist, no, I'm not a troll. And if you all think I'm a troll, then I'm stopping the show. 
I'm not I don't gonna... know. I guess, you know what? No, I'm going to say you guys aren't trolls because you guys are talking amongst yourselves, you know what I mean? And about your opinion. Like, you're not on these people, like, on that in, on their Instagram, like, being like, this guy sucks. No, we, and we say this all under our own name. We stand by our comments. We tell people when we're wrong. I was wrong about the dumpster last week, remember? What were you I... talking about the dumpster? I like to think I'm pretty positive. <laughs> Teresa, if you had a troll account, what would your name be? It's Her F- new account is TM Hawk twenty five. Luckily, for the most part, our scene is pretty good. We just talk about the drama because it's something to talk about. Yeah, and to be fair, <laughs> people tune in because they want to hear us give honest opinions. They don't want to tune in to us giving great, awesome five-star reviews to everything we talk about. If you want to just read promotion, go to a blog or just read the the PR write-up that a company is giving you. But if you want to hear like three people just, you know, roundhousing on, is it roundhousing? Roundtabling about, you know. <laughs> Roundhouse kicking our opinions in your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, guys. You want to wrap this up? All right, let's wrap this up. Marsham Toy Hour. Roundhouse kicking our opinions into your face every week. Not because we want to, but because we have to. Wait, was that how it goes? Dude, that was really good. It's a wrap. That's, yeah. See you all next time. Until next transmission. Bye. Yeah, screw Instagrams. Peace out, (laughs) y'all. Oh, God, I have to go get some stuff done. I've literally right. just been sitting on the floor of my bedroom with my phone, which was fun, but not productive. All right, see you trolls later. <laughs> Bye. Troller.